Hey, hey, Mikey. Mikey. Do you check oh, this out? Wait, wait. This is Mikey from oneup.com. And yo, I'm here with my man, Hot Sauce. Hot Sauce. So when we see a lot of street ball going around, everyone is doing Hot Sauce move. The ball in the shirt. You want to play like the sizzle? You got to do the sizzle moves. I do a little break dancing, bro. And I was wondering if maybe you could incorporate a little of the break dancing moves in your street ball. It'd be like <laughs> something new, you know? Oh, oh man. Yeah, let's do it. Stop like this. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. 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 This was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, that's too much. Hot sauce is all. Holy shit, that's it. This one, I'm hot sauce for the first time. Oh, sweet, dude. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Jason, can you do me a favor when you're done with the, this Tabasco bit? Can you um, run over by Milky's desk? Remember that time you went into his office and you were, I'm Milky, I'm Milky. Oh, you know, yeah, he, he found out about that. So he's not, he's not, he's not too happy with you right now. Oh, man. oh and while you're over there, Jeremy um, has uh, Final Fantasy 12 coming in today. I don't know. See if it came in yet. If you can, start hooking up the direct feed gear because we need to get the footage right now. All right, I'll check it out. Cool. Thanks, man. Have All fun right. with the Tabasco. Hey, 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 Ryan, yeah. it's a uh, hot sauce. Move to the back seat because the sizzle is back. Woo! Set on your face. You're here for a reason. Just uh, came by to say what's up, man. I'm sorry. What? Uh, what were you doing in my office? I was away, you know. I was away on business, covering the Final Fantasy event down in Santa Monica. Oh yeah. Take a look at that Moogle shirt. Those shirts are really big. Final Fantasy XI. Thank you for uh, making such a fantastic expansion. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank to you. see you again. Yeah, I see you. Thanks. Yasu, appreciate it very much. I can't leave my desk alone. Can't like leave my that. office for a long. Do I need to put a lock on that? No. I'm no, sorry. No. Did I say? Did I say it was I... Jason speak time? Right. I'm sorry, man. Uh, Are you done? I think so. Are you done? Uh, yeah. Did I say Jason speak? Cool sunglasses. Okay. All right. You're done. Yeah. Jeremy? 
Jeremy, what are you doing here? I'm here in the mailroom. I'm waiting for my copy of Final Fantasy XII to arrive from Japan. You haven't got it yet? Jeez. No, but the minute that it's in, I'm all over it. All right, well, you let me know. All right. All right. Like Final Fantasy XII to you? Yes. Well, you're wrong. It's a PS2 game, not PSP. It's a Katamari. Me and my Katamari. Ah, uh, you love Katamari. How's uh, this one? Well, I, I loved the first Katamari <laughs> and the second Katamari. This one isn't really, uh, it's not really sparking the fire in my mouth. So, what's wrong with it? Well, you know, it's not the controls, despite what most people think. I was They're actually that. okay. I, it took me about a level and I got used to them. So that's fine. What's wrong with the game can be explained with M&Ms. M&Ms. Here's stage one. It's a little five minute chunk where you roll up to like 1.5 meters. Here's stage two. It's about five minutes also. Here's stage three. Then you get to stage four, and what do you know? It consists of a little bit of stage one and stage two all wow. put together. Then you get to stage what are we up to now? Five? And it's just adding a little bit more. I don't even have enough M&Ms to explain this. But basically what happens is they just keep adding and you're doing the same thing over and over again. And you know I like green M&Ms and red M&Ms and brown M&Ms. Mm -hmm. I love them all equally. Let's but see. when you have them all at once, they all kind of taste the same. And it just gets a little boring after a while. So it's a little bit heartbreaking. We've all eaten M&Ms many exactly. times before. And that's my chocolatey heartbreak. I like that analogy. We should use that in our review section. Candy right. based. I'll, uh, I'll put that in the review. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's too bad. I had high hopes, but what are you going to do? I don't know. I'll just keep eating my M&Ms and waiting for Final Fantasy XII. Let me know when that comes in. Oh, I will. Let's get it. Hey, what's up, man? Check it out, we just got our, uh, oh, the issue you did cover story awesome. for. Awesome, my first cover story. How's so, it look? Looks good, dude. How was uh, France? France is awesome. First yeah. time to Europe, Paris, beautiful city, beautiful city. So how's it coming along? Uh, I think I was really impressed by it, you know. Any, any different from uh, the last video that came out, the one yeah, with uh, looks, Gabriel? It looks a lot better. When I saw it, I saw two different builds. The first day I was at Ubisoft, like at the actual Ubisoft studio outside of Paris. And uh, they were just showing like the basic rundown of, of how the game worked. Mm -hmm. And then the next day we actually went to Lyon, which is about two hours south of Paris by train. And we actually went to the Arcane Studios and that's where we saw the most updated build. And that looked really, really good. It, it actually seemed like you could either be an assassin, mm -hmm. a warrior, or a mage, or something like that. And right. as it turns out, we're learning now that instead, you don't choose your character class, right. but you can develop certain skills. You don't choose at the beginning. It's how you play and how, what skills you choose as you play that determines <laughs> like what class you are. You're not officially a class mm -hmm. in the traditional fantasy RPG sense of it. It's just however you choose to play, that's how you play. They weren't really forthcoming with <laughs> most of the, of the spells and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, they were showing freeze spells, frost spells, fire spells. Um, you could have like a telekinesis spell, which kind of works like Half-Life's Gravity Gun. Right. The spell stuff is like part of what's really got me interested in the game. Yeah. It's like, you know, I was just playing Elder Scrolls Oblivion in similar fashion. It's like, you take something that's fundamentally, you're used to seeing it in this top-down view, or the typical hack and slash, and you know, right. you're the wizard, and you sit in the back, and you press the same button over and over to shoot a fireball or something. Instead of a gun, you're actually yeah. aiming it and shooting totally. it, and then in this game, it actually looks like you can hit uh, you hit a flammable object with a fireball, and that actually sets that on fire. Exactly. One of the more interesting aspects about the game that I've seen so far is just some of the emergent stuff that's come of come of that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, one example that you gave in your story that I was just reading is that uh, they weren't ready for mm -hmm. an enemy that was pursuing you to hit an ice patch that you right. laid down on a bridge and then go tumbling off. Right. Apparently, the story was 
that they were testing this part. They were testing out some frost spells or whatever. And someone accidentally put a slick down, like, right on the ledge. And the orc hit the ice patch and just slipped off the edge and, and just fell to his death. And they were totally not expecting that. And then, of course, like, that means they have to go back and re-examine the whole game. That means they have to go back every single level they've done and right. see where, if someone puts an ice patch down, does that break the game? Right. And like, fix it. Say, what if the orc had a key on him? Right. And, and you're supposed to kill him and exactly. grab the key. And and grab then, whatever. Then the key just went down the thing. One of the other examples they showed us is that there's a key, there's a guy holding a key in a warehouse. And there are like three different ways to break into the warehouse and get the guy's key. You can either sneak in through the rafters, like using assassin skills, or you can just barge in using mage skills and warrior skills and just like kill everyone in the room and grab the key. Or you can just sneak past, wait for the guy to, or you hide in the shadows, you wait for the guy to walk past, and you stab him from behind so it doesn't alert the other guys, and then you take the key. So it's not really like find like the crystal and put it in the, the whatever and turn right. it and stuff like that, like Resident Evil style puzzles. But it's just like very natural feeling right. situations. So, yeah. 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 It's all environmental based. Like cool. it's nothing like obvious, very gamey kind of puzzles. Mm. So multiplayer turns out was a big part of the game too. And I was surprised to hear that. They were, they were tentative about telling us about it, but they finally did. It's like a cross between Battlefield and World of Warcraft Battlegrounds. So how many players we got? It's, uh, let's see, it was, right now I think it's 32, so 16 per side, and it's totally group based. You have actually five classes and you actually do start the game as a, as a particular class. Warrior, Assassin, Priest, Mage, and Archer. So like five of the eight World of Warcraft classes are represented. And uh, it's you play as a group. So you have priests, healing warriors who are doing tanking, and you have assassins dealing out damage, stuff like that. The game is comprised of five different maps. And you are starting, and you're starting with one class, and then through the five maps, you are developing your skills and you're keeping the skills over the five maps. So when you get to the fifth map and you get to the, the final ultimate map, you are totally powered up. Or if you're playing different classes, you can switch between the classes in between the game, like over the five maps. So if you don't choose to play one class the entire campaign, then you are underpowered compared to the rest of the team or compared to your enemies towards the end, but you have more options. If your team is running low on warriors, then you can switch to your warrior, who's not maybe the strongest warrior, but he can help you support. That's probably what I'm most excited about. I'll play through the single player campaign, but I think multiplayer is going to be really hot. Yeah. How do you actually, how do you win uh, an individual one of those five battles? It's like ticket based and control point based, mm -hmm. just like Battlefield. So whoever's controlling the most part of the map or whoever kills the other team first, right. they win that map. Whoever wins, then you go further into enemy territory. Oh, I see. So there's two different factions yeah, and it goes in the it, way, it's, it's humans versus the undead. So what's with the rumor about uh, Dark Messiah on PlayStation 3 and 360? Oh, I've heard that rumor and they didn't really say anything. Hey, skip. Are you going to be playing uh, MGS tonight? Yes, I will be. I will be. Cool. I will see you then. Awesome. How's the kid? Doing all right. Keeps me up at 2.30, which is why I play WoW and MGS at a lot of times like 4 in the morning, 6 awesome. in the morning. I'll so, be there. But we'll see you tonight then. So yeah, they haven't really said anything about that yet. Hey, solid chain. You're, what's up, Scooter? You, I, I, yeah, I see, hey, what's I see up? you love it. Yeah, oh. You finished up Assistance yet? Yeah, multiple times. You know, it's my favorite game. You know? How long did it take you to finish? How long did it take you to beat the end? Maybe like 45 minutes or something? 20 minutes, 4 seconds. Repeat. We both know that the new camera angle does kind of break the game a little bit. It's, while I will admit that's not as bad as like Twin Snakes, right. the new camera does make the game really, really easy, at least for me. All the boss fights took like less than half an hour. You know, you know, I kept switching between the new camera and the old camera, because I still like the top-down camera for any time where I need to know where north is. Stay out of this. I also use a top-down camera for just indoors because there's like walls all around you. It doesn't really make sense to have swiveling camera to see more walls. So I keep it for indoor environments. And huh? Hmm. Footsteps. The new camera, people who wanted it, everybody who was bitching about it, Mark and Chu, those guys, you know, they can use it, but it doesn't really affect my opinion of the game. It, you know, it couldn't have gone up, couldn't have gone down. It's, it was already a 10 for me. So It does suck that for people who have never played it before, if they are using just the new camera, they might think it's a little easier. They'll, they'll get to play through it. It's such a great experience. That's the problem being late to the party. Well, they are late to the party. 
but it's an awesome party. Oh, and I also like the camera in multiplayer, like especially when you're looking for jackals like you when you're playing online. Scooter, I, I don't want to talk about multiplayer ever again. I, get, I mean, I had this conversation with the other guys. Seriously, I'm done. I'm done. It's over. Why is shooting not on a trigger, but, uh, on, a, on a shoulder button, like every single other game out there? Like every single other game out there, instead you have to take your thumb off of your look, your aiming, to shoot. Well, you shoots like Metal Gear. Yeah, shoots just like the single player game. I'm not saying it's better, but I'm saying it works. And I'm so used to playing Metal Gear, it wasn't. It didn't seem confusing to me. Any other first person first shooter. person shooter this is a, online? It's not first person shooter. Background. What is it then? All the modes are set up just like SOCOM modes. It's you know a third person stealth action shooting game. When Metal Gear 3 came out, all three of us were on the review, and I was the sole guy who said the camera is screwed up. The camera would be better being this other way. Right. And you guys were like, oh, it wouldn't be Metal Gear. Oh, it, it has to be above. It just wouldn't be Metal Gear. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be better. It wouldn't be Metal Gear. They, they do the camera exactly what I was talking about. Uh, Shu was talking about it too, like more like Splinter Cell, and you're like, yep, it's better. Game is better. And now, it's like, Oh, well, the, the, the shooting button needs to be on the square button because that's Metal Gear. Why, why is that Metal Gear? Like, that's not what Metal Gear is. Metal Gear is sneaking around. Metal Gear is not fighting with the controls. Like, you awkward. guys did not play a lot. You guys, you guys didn't you, give enough time Maybe if you guys have been there. playing Metal Gear Solid 3, I've played Metal Gear 1, games. 2, and 3 way more than either of you guys have. You haven't played Probably 3 more than me. both of you put in play combined. Three. All three games, if you put them together, I mean, if you want to fucking throw I mean, your dick out and see whose dick is longer, <laughs> I played all three of those games way more. I played through two, like, I agree, like agreed. Okay. eight times. Next, next. Okay. okay. How could you possibly like Metal Gear Online so much, but not want to touch Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow or Chaos Theory? Or I, SOCOM. I like, SOCOM like, is a way All better. those games are better. In all aspects, than Metal Gear. I, like, but Metal I also like the Metal, the Metal Gear universe. I like the Metal Gear universe yeah. better than I like those. Other, I mean, to be honest with you, I like that kind of that that uh, universe like better you, than I like SOCOM or Splinter Cell. I just do. You have to hold down three buttons to get down the, the precise first person down the barrel shooting, or you're running around in third person and kind of generally aiming towards another character. And then if you happen to get him, like, you're not going to react. Your character can't react and turn around fast enough yeah. to, to fight back. One is the shooting. Two is the fact you don't have a reticle, you know, when you're when you're when you're in third person. person. Yeah. And then three is that talk is on select. Well, that, that's that, that's that is that's a bad I was thing. I don't know like, why they yeah. don't. They is it sufficient and okay, or was it fun? Because I, 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 I had fun. I had fun. And like you know, you can't convince me that I didn't have fun. With yeah, the like the thing right, is, you guys happen. just. I think the modes are fun. I think the ideas are cool, mm -hmm. and the weapons, the items. Like I like the idea of dropping a magazine or hiding in a cardboard box, and all of that stuff. I think they're good ideas, but they're forcing that onto Metal Gear Solid's control scheme, which doesn't work in a faster-paced action environment, like Mark said. You Splinter Cell fans enjoy having buttons do different things in your different modes in your games, but like I think they wanted to keep a cohesive gameplay set across the different modes of this game. Moving forward, I want them to evolve the gameplay of Metal Gear in general to make it more accessible, because I agree that as much as I love Metal Gear Solid's gameplay, it is very difficult. I reviewed Metal Gear Solid 3 and 24. The gameplay in Metal Gear Solid is incredibly precise, incredibly, you know, responsive. You're in complete control of everything you're doing. Go play a bad game. Go play a game with bad control, and then tell me how bad Metal Gear Solid's gameplay. But go play a good game. Go play Halo Two, or go play Splinter Cell. And I don't, I don't. Or so calm. Yeah, I, what I, I think still it's don't... comparable. I mean, like it's more complex and it's not as, as fast, but you are in complete control. And like maybe you can't do everything you want to do from a different a different game. That's it's not problem. complex. It's just unnecessarily clunky. I set up this huge trap for Brian. I knew where he was going to come. I set up all these mines. I was waiting there in first person mode to shoot him, and it completely worked. And that's like the awesome moment you guys would talk about in Splinter Cell. And like that same thing happened here. Yeah. No, that's true. You know, so like, you can you can really set it up a strategy. You guys make it sound like this is a dumb game. It's no, no, no. Not. But but uh, like I say, the, the the modes are cool. It does allow for like all these cool moments. But it's like the controls are just like they just they screwed them up in like three different ways. If I can go into first person, let me effectively shoot somebody in first person. If I can talk to people, let me effectively talk to people. If I can look while I shoot, let me look while I shoot.
And in, in general, I hate double dips, like especially with DVDs, like buying, you know, Eternal Sunshine's Father's Mind, and then a month later you get a two disc version. But if you're going to double dip, you might as well do it this way. Well, and you got to give them credit. It's like the most lavishly produced package ever. Like, did you get your copy of the uh, MGS Saga? Indeed, the one awesome. where he talks about bosses. Lack of a breast tattoo that he was going to put in. Eh, 最初の時は、えー、この胸のところに、えー、蛇の入れ墨があって、銃をちょっとこう入れますよね。で、入れる、えー、胸を見た人が、あまあその蛇が笑ってるっていうですね。There are forces here at Ziff Davis who want to bring Metal Gear down, and we know who they are. We gotta continue to defend what is right. Oh, it wouldn't no. be Metal Gear if there weren't some stupid that. ass, you know, woman that talks about Godzilla movies for a half an hour. And it wouldn't be Metal Gear if you weren't like, God damn it, when is this cutscene going to end? Oh, it just wouldn't be Metal Gear. Like, I can still complain about I'm it. Not, I can yeah, still want I'm it to like, be better. Um, I'm not sure I want to defend alongside you if you're gonna be wearing that getup. Hey, when I sing the Snake Eater song at karaoke, you're there with me, all right? Okay, that I will do. You don't want to talk about multiplayer. Well, at least play with me and skip tonight. Kick your ass, Scooter. Let's go play. Oh, okay, Mr. Buzzard Kill. Whatever. Hey, Jane. <laughs> hey. Hey, Shane. I was wondering yeah. if you guys had a copy of Final Fantasy XII. Uh, it comes out like tomorrow or something in Japan. We haven't got it yet. Yes, oh. Neither have we got but, the well, game that got it. Was, 40 oh, out of 40. Yeah. Jeremy, I know Jeremy is like waiting at, by the mailbox. He's super excited about it. Oh, so. Jeremy? T Frog. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good luck. It. You do have hey, it. How come you didn't tell oh. me? Well, you and everyone else in the office. I've been waiting people for this. have been pestering me all week long. <laughs> now that I have it, I need a moment alone. <laughs> so how far did you get? Uh, I'm only like two hours in. And most of that's oh, been spinning man. around trying to figure out what these people are saying to me in their crazy moon language Japanese. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of conscience. Bon, he's the hero. He's kind of feminine, and uh, like his chest is really weird. It looks like he has a trilobite carapace on or something. <laughs> it's just kind of this weird yeah. texture. But yeah. But most 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 of the time, the graphics are really nice. Like the characters, the models. When you look at them, the texturing on their faces it's not really realistic. It's almost like you know, like the actual paintings that they're based on. Mm. It's very stylized. Um, it's just Ooh, it's, it's a really yeah, it's a pretty looking game so is it fun like how's have you killed stuff i've killed a few things and um i'm, I'm enjoying the slaughter actually. oh really um I, I like the end of random battles i've been yeah. sick of random battles for many years oh yeah and just the freedom to run around and kill stuff without having to you know have a loading screen and mm -hmm.
that even when you're in combat, you still have that little menu of options. So there is still some uh, what kind. What do you mean? Well, okay, let's get. Oh, into oh, combat like real quick. Oh, not that menu. There's really no difference between being in combat and being out of combat, except oh. that you'll be more likely to take damage when you're in combat. Okay. But yeah, you can enter the license board, which is like the equivalent of the spear grid. Sphere grid. And, um, oh my god, no. <laughs> the sphere grid Basically, almost killed me in FF10. Well, it's, it's, I don't think it's quite that limiting and, and complicated. <laughs> totally. it's, like, it's like chess. So yeah, basically, I have these two abilities. And once you activate an ability, then everything adjacent becomes available on the grid. Right. So then I can, when I earn enough license points, I can purchase those items. Do the monsters respawn in an area after you Yeah, they them? do respawn. There's no, there's no random battles, but after you leave a section and come back into that area, they'll, uh, they'll be there again. So you can level up. Oh yeah, you can grind all you want. <laughs> It's, it's yeah. MMO style, you know. What do you mean MMO style? Well, I mean the gameplay, the the roaming feel of combat and the lack of random battles and the fact that your characters, uh, the, the rest of your party aside from your main character, are kind of self-sufficient and autonomous. That's very MMO style. It, it, mm -hmm. you, can, you can go as far as you want to replicate that MMO feeling where you're playing with a lot of other people, except it's all just the computer. And it's nice because, like an MMO, your magic points recharge as you, uh, as, you as you walk around and as yeah. you fight. Is there so any it's bending uh, over and praying for you to recharge your points like an MMO where you just rest. sit there I and haven't, wait? I haven't done any bending over yet in this game, but, <laughs> you know, it, it's entirely Except possible. Yeah, how much did you pay speaking. for it? <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, the $95. That was, that was bending over, but I don't think I can really say that was a gameplay element. Um, okay, what's cute, or Taru or Moogle? Oh, the Moogles in this game, they're like deadly insulin disaster. They're really, really cute. <laughs> So, do, would you say you're excited about this game? Like, personally, you um, want to play it more? As much as I ever get excited about anything, yes. <laughs> no, I, I, I know. My, my, black, my black empty heart is, is vaguely interesting. I feel some stirrings. Uh, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing the game all the way through, especially in English. Yeah. But I just, I like the, the vibe of the game. I like the gameplay. I like uh, the graphics and the music. Um, I don't know. I've been a really big fan of Yasumi Matsuno. And even though he apparently went crazy and was taken off the project, <laughs> and the game is now a Kawaze, Kawazu, whatever his name is. Yeah. Uh, crazy like a fox. <laughs> <laughs> crazy like Matsuno. Um, yeah, even though, even though he's no longer on the project and didn't finish up the game, it still has his fingerprints all over it. Yeah. I mean, the storytelling is, is very similar to Vagrant Story and Final Fantasy Tactics. It has a very Baroque feel to it. I mean, the game looks like Final Fantasy IX, a little bit like Final Fantasy X, but the uh, the architecture and the clothing and costuming are all very ornate. I love Final Fantasy VIII. It's my favorite one. So. Wow, really? Yeah. I thought it was my favorite. Except what? for of, of eight, PSA. eight and ten are my favorites. Yeah. Oh my I god. I don't like ten. Yeah, I don't like ten I think either. It was better. Well, actually, nine is like probably the least popular. Less, I like way less nine. Okay. Eight, I like eight. Than seven. I liked eight actually. I hope you're getting all that. Yeah. This is <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like that's it right well, there. The Everyone loves number it. game. Number right number game. <laughs> I think I love 12. Can I borrow it when you're done? <laughs> Maybe. I'll think about it. Okay. Yeah, when are you going to be done? Can you finish um, this up tonight? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can get can through the rest Can I have it tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Are we done here? <laughs>